You ready? Yeah. All right. Hi, welcome to My Vagina. This is Jesse Karen. And this is Rebecca Frank. And here we are again, having our current historical, hysterical, infuriating conversation about our lives as vagina having organisms. All content made up on the spot, but probably researched. <laughs> Just kidding. It's definitely researched. <laughs> especially but. rough time to live <laughs> no, as a vagina having organism. Great. <laughs> what do you mean? It's fine. <laughs> Today we're talking to Rebecca Pronsky and then we're going to tell you why it's important to vote. If you can vote, you should vote. Get off your dirty bums and vote. We do understand that there are barriers to entry to a lot of people. We just, uh, for a lot of people, we just read this crazy shit in Alabama that uh, they're basically, they are disallowing people who live in public housing from using their public housing ID as an identification that's that you're allowed to use for voting and instead are making people go to the DMV to get licenses. But the DMV has they've closed DMVs in some of these areas that have a higher rate of people living in public housing, which are a lot of times low income people of color. Mm -hmm. um, and so people can't. And so they're like 50 miles away. So people can't get anywhere to get a license. And so then they can't vote. So it's like, you know, they're just, they're setting up barriers. And then when you cross one, there's another. Yeah. So we understand that a lot of people can't vote, but if you can vote, you should vote. Voting shouldn't be a privilege, but it is. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> All right. Anyway. In my dreams, I'd forgotten how the world changes on a dime. And we're running out of time We made it to outer space But the sight of a woman's face Still inspires so much hate Why do I try? We're here with uh, Rebecca Pronsky today. It's like a double Rebecca situation. You're outnumbered. KAH versus CCA. It's true. true. It's, a, it's a battle to end all battles. It's an epic battle. <laughs> it's an epic battle. Yeah, let's just turn <laughs> off the speakers. We're just going to do a cage match. <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> all right, well, let's talk about you. Let's talk all about right. your things. Who are you? What's your what's your uh, stuff? What's my stuff? <laughs> uh, wow. I mean, I'm, I, I just turned 38, so I have a lot of things I could say. <laughs> happy birthday. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Happy birthday. I'm a Virgo. It's the worst sign. But I think for the purposes of this podcast, uh, probably what you guys want me to say and <laughs> is that I am a musician and a songwriter. And I recently wrote a concept album about Hillary Clinton, which I then turned into a cabaret show. And it is going to be in the Fringe Festival yes. in October in New York City and in the Baltimore Fringe Festival in November. Charm City. Ooh. Charm City French Festival. Charm City. <laughs> I love knowing the names for cities. So tell us, tell us about your show. Like what was the inspiration? Um, so for about 15 years, I've been doing the singer songwriter thing, touring in the folk scene. A lot of, uh, older got, men telling me that mm. my music is too loud or I shouldn't have oh. that electric guitar. Oh, or, so it's like life. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you were the shrill oh, remember, woman of country music. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, remember when I saw Joan Baez in 1967, how come folk music doesn't sound like that anymore? And I'd be it's like, it's, you know, folk, it's like a people's music. So I was yeah. writing about my experience, right. um, you know, that introspective stuff. Well, the inspiration was Hillary Clinton lost the election, which sucked. <laughs> it um, was awful. And, and uh, I was really devastated. And I mean, everybody was. And well, not everybody. So people yes. were elated. And I couldn't really imagine what I would do with myself as a creative person. Mm -hmm. And I also had, um, I'm kind of an anxious, neurotic Jew from New York. And um, I was really, really worried about her, like in a sort of motherly way. Like I Aww. started to be really concerned because she had just been this person that we saw all the time, Always. every day, many times a day. And then she just disappeared. Yeah, gone. And I got <sighs> like, you know, kind of consumed with, wondering if she was okay or what was in her head and was she going crazy? Was she just swearing a lot? Like, hope she was. was she not getting out of bed? So I just started writing these songs mm. to sort of like answer my own questions, but really it was a way for me to process 
my own feelings about the election. I started writing all these songs. I put them together and I realized that they were becoming a concept. And then I made this concept album with all the songs. And then I recorded it with all, with a whole group of women. It was a creative, all female creative team, which was such an interesting and valuable experience. Mm -hmm. Having basically just been like playing with men my whole life. Yeah. Generally in my experience touring with men, it's just a different, a whole different vibe. And um, this was just like, everybody was like on time. There was it's like food. refreshing. Everybody brought food to yeah. share. <laughs> you know, I've like played with men for a whole day. They don't eat like, so it was just this like really supportive. <laughs> Women love and we all talk. talked about our feelings about the election. So it was just a really cool experience. And then when I put out the record, I started doing it live and then it became a cabaret show. Mm. I just put on my pantsuit and I do this. <laughs> I would just really like to interject here just like at, for for our listening audience, like how this conversation came to be because. Oh, yeah. We didn't even tell a love story. This is, the, this is the best thing. Jesse and I and our friend Pam went to have a glass of wine at this bar, High Dive. And I look over and I see Rebecca wearing this, wearing like costume jewelry pearls and a t-shirt that said nasty women vote on it. And I looked at Jesse and I was like, oh my God, I think she might like our podcast. Maybe I should go give her a sticker. She's also the James Bond of handing out fucking oh, yeah. our, no, biz- our do that. business sticker. She's like, you know, what's so funny is I'm here doing a photo shoot, my Hillary Clinton <laughs> fringe festival show. And it was like, yeah, I definitely did not expect <laughs> to run into a two people who run a feminist podcast on High Dave. <laughs> it was so weird. It was so weird, but so great. So you guys ran, uh, ran a fundraiser for Alessandra Biaggi, right? Yeah, when I, until the Fringe Festival, I was just doing the show um, at random venues that would have me. And I decided to do them all as fundraisers for um, Democrats running for office. The first one was for Luba Gretchen Shirley, who won her primary and is now in a very competitive race in Long Island against Peter King, who's a- uh, yeah. He sweats cheese. He's he's awful. Yeah, no, he's, <laughs> he's terrible. He's a terrible and, um, person. She's a great candidate, but I don't know. We don't know what'll happen, but I'm really involved in her campaign. Mm-hmm. Um, and I raised some money for her with my first show. Then we did Alessandra Biagi mm-hmm. and nobody really was taking that race that seriously. Yeah. Yeah. She came out of fucking nowhere. And it she seemed like. just nailed it. She didn't I, even expect I to win. I was surprised. I mean, it was amazing. Yeah. yeah. She really amazing. so outspent, which is so cool. It's a really big deal. That guy, yeah. Jeff Klein, is the head of the IDC, which mm-hmm. is that group of Democrats that um, blocked a lot of important legislation. and Freaking Aligned with the Republicans. Not what just to win against that? a member of the IDC, win against that guy, yeah. the head of it, I who's mean, been in a long time. It was really very cool. Just seeing that, like, six of those IDC members fell to, you know, new candidates. I'm really hoping, as kind of an aside... Um, the amount of like groundswell around these candidates that were the amount of anger among the Democrats at people who were members of the IDC yeah. that we were able to organize around uh, insurgent candidates, I guess is what we're calling them. Yeah. I hope that that stays and that people really turn up in the midterms. I think to, like, it will. I mean, just the, the amount of people that I've gotten involved that yeah. know, never paid attention, never voted in a primary mm-hmm. and are like making phone calls and text banking and going door to door. It's like it's really blows my mind. And it's yeah, it's really the only thing that I can focus on if I want to stay sane. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's been rough. So Biagi and then after. And so she yes. came on. She a- she came to one. of She was the special guest at one of my fundraisers and uh, used to work for Hillary. She was the deputy director of operations. So oh, wow. I learned a lot of interesting stuff about Hillary, um, which we'll talk about later. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I was just like, or now. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and I mean, she's just really inspiring what, you know, she basically decided to run because Hillary lost and she felt like she needed to inspire her people who had worked for her on the campaign she had to do something. And that yeah. was what she decided to do. And then um, there was another show, which was uh, for Zellner Myrie, who also mm-hmm. won his mm-hmm. campaign mm-hmm. against the IDC, yeah. um, which is he, And he amazing. was, was he the one that was against uh, Jesse, Jesse Hamilton. Hamilton? That was like the big one, I yeah, felt like. Yeah, it, it, was, it was also a very unlikely race and he won. And I mean, he's a great guy. I, I met all these people, like they're, they're just regular people who just decided to do this. They, yeah. they all are just honest and down to earth. And it really shows you how- you know, it is a grassroots thing that it really can work. And it's just getting to know people one-on-one, you know, that really makes a difference. Mm-hmm. Such a change. Just the establishment politics has been such a problem. So it, you know, and especially in New York, I mean, we have like super machine government here. So it's, it's nice to see that 
you know, people want change and that, and that people are coming out and that there are people willing to, to lead that, you know, that are willing to put their face in front of the camera that are willing to do all of the work and everything like that to it's make a change and it's working. And I'm going to thank Hillary for that. Not Bernie Sanders. <laughs> oh way. yeah. How do you feel about Bernie Sanders? Oh, okay, cool. Like, yeah. I, I actually voted for Bernie in the primary as like, just to be like, Hey Hillary, you should, cause it's New York state. And I, yeah. I felt that she would absolutely win, but I've always been really a Hillary fan. Um, and I, I think he says a lot of great stuff, but I don't, I don't really feel particularly positive about him being able to do anything. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's certainly mm-hmm. qualified in that he's been in government for right. a long time and he's a stand up guy. I like that he's a Jew from Brooklyn. Yes. He that's sounds nice. like members of my family. <laughs> sure is familiar. Does, yep. But um you know, I there were there was just this moment I was I was kind of like hemming and hawing about it and there was this moment in the debate where he got kind of gruff and he sort of yelled at Hillary and I and I was just like no. Nope. Yep. Nah. Yeah, like that's been cuz I was definitely uh I was deciding between them like you know, leading up to the primary, I wasn't sure what I was going to do because I, I liked the sound of a lot of his politics. I, I had a conversation with one of my friends um, and she was basically like, yeah, but like, you know, he's saying some really cool stuff about um, student loans and economic stuff and, you know, looking at class issues and, and conversations that never happened. Like the reason why I always liked, um, God, I wish I could actually recall anything these days who was it? He ran in 2008 for the nomination and there was a whole big scandal, but he was like the only one that talked about poverty really. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll think of it and it'll go in the episode notes, but, um, uh, I would really, I was really upset by like his lack of campaign inclusion in terms of like who was on his staff and his like that, that women were, so into him, but that he didn't seem to take women's issues particularly seriously. Um, and that then the Democrats kind of like marched him out as someone who, uh, you know, about around the idea of not using abortion as a litmus test for being liberal. Oh, and I'm yeah, like, no, you're basically, really yeah. And I'm like, you're basically just like saying that women's health isn't important. And, right. and like, and I know that this part isn't entirely his fault, but I'm still mm-hmm. kind of pissed about it. And, and it's partially his fault. So I'm mad at him for his part in it is that we have women that are, that are running their campaigns, that are running for office, that are doing the work, that are out there, that are doing all of this stuff. And they're Bernie Sanders Democrats. It's like, no, (laughs) they're like, don't give him the credit of women of color when he cut women of color out of his campaign early on. Like it's, and he takes it and it's like, this is like, don't give him the credit. Give them the credit. Yeah. Like, I don't want to hear that. Uh, a a woman who, yeah, a woman who worked on Bernie Sanders campaign has just, uh, been elected to, has, has just, uh, gained the democratic nomination for the Bronx. It's like, no, she has a name, (laughs) Mm. you know, you don't, it's uh, anyway, (laughs) sorry, we totally, it's got derailed. That's my fault. No, it's not your fault. It's my fault because I knew that was going to (laughs) happen. I know I can't, it just makes me so mad. Back to your show. I just felt like Hillary, you know, she is such a pragmatist and like, to a fault in terms of campaigning. Yeah. There, during that debate, she just, you know, they would be like $15 minimum wage. And he was like everywhere. And then she'd be like, well, it's a really good idea, but some States, you know, people have higher or lower income. Cost of living is different. So we might not be able to pass it, you know, all the way, but some States might be 12 or 13. And he was just, people just booed her. Mm-hmm. And I was like, listen, she's, she's she doing the math. Knows. She knows. Yeah. yeah. She's just, yeah. she's just trying to be, direct and and, and tell you the truth about like what is going to happen right you know? but like people didn't really want to hear that and of course you know, his thing sounds way better it's easier it's wrapped up with a little bow yeah and um i just felt kind of like annoyed with that but i don't know i was just like what are we supposed to ask hillary to start saying like simplistic stuff yeah, when she understands the system really well mm-hmm. and has been working as a politician for many, many years. Yes. Right. You know? And when she's never done that, like that's never been part right, of that's who she is. Not her thing. So, yeah. Um, so have you found that doing this has helped you? Like, how has your process been following 2016? Cause I, you know, I'm thinking about like what my day after felt like, like, I just remember it like feeling like 
fucking a where were you like, yeah no, <laughs> oh yeah it's like so, one of those big moments though well, right? during the show we have we actually have a moment where we each get out of character just it's just me and my um my friend Deidre is the pianist and musical director and I play Hillary and but we both sort of play Hillary we share some of her words we use the words from a bunch of her different speeches and books and just we don't want to speak for her so we have her speak for herself well, anyway, so in the show, we actually get out of character and talk about that. We have like a moment where we talk about our individual experiences with the election and after the election and then give the audience some time to process their own feelings about it. Um, and I was I had campaigned for Hillary in Pennsylvania and Ohio. So after but I didn't really actually have any expectation that she would lose I was at a Hillary victory party with all these women in white and nasty women t-shirts. And we had Hillary oh, no. cupcakes oh my God. and the cupcakes were never eaten. Oh, and that no. haunts me just thinking of those like <laughs> sweet cupcakes, the sweet taste of victory, oh, never eaten, yeah. just thrown away. It was so, apocalyptic. Mm -hmm. It was apocalyptic. And, and I think a lot of people just didn't, I've just been, I, one thing that I, that I've, find has really been helpful is just time passing. Mm -hmm. Like people are getting their stuff together. They've sort of accepted the reality. It's not surreal anymore. I mean, even though there are certain days I wake up and I'm like, wow. Why? Yeah. Really? Yeah. It felt apocalyptic. Like just outside, everyone was like crying. It was dark. There were less people on the street or they yeah. were like staggering around, yeah. confused. It was the opposite of when Obama won in the streets. Yeah. Like erupted in Brooklyn. People were, you know, standing oh on lampposts, screaming and honking yeah. their horns. But I mean, you know, getting inside the head of somebody who lost is like getting inside the head of somebody whose father died or something. It's the mm. same like, you know, process of coming to grips with something. It takes a long time. I was just processing grief and I yeah. figured we're all kind of have the same process of grief. It is different situations, but um, but her head is really, my head is really all of our heads. I mean, we all talk about this. We have had very similar experiences, yeah. right? So. When she lost, we lost. You know, I mean, in a way, my show is not really about Hillary. It's really about women. It's really yeah. about us, really about myself. But it is also, she is like this figurehead for um, what we all, I mean, she is the person that's happened to you, but it also yeah. happened to all of us. Yeah. yeah. It's called Hillary Clinton's Song Cycle <laughs> Witness. And I don't want people to focus too much on the loss, but more on the recovery. So the loss is basically the show starts after that. Mm -hmm. um, right. And she goes through denial first. So she's like, I wake up in my, in the white house. Everything's great. And it's like, no, right. That was a dream. Oh, don't get excited, honey. Things never change. Um, but we try not to like make the show about sadness. Although you, people do experience some, there is, there is a few songs. There are some songs that are sad and reflective, but there's also the anger and the rage and the like mm. a lot of swearing and just that kind of thing that I think people really need more than they need to re-experience their misery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They need to like come out of that misery and do stuff. And that's why I did the shows as benefits for politicians who were running. Yeah. Cause I'm like, these are the people we need to focus on. We need to move forward. We can't, you know, onward. That's yeah. her, and it's that's her thing. Yeah. Onward. Yeah. It's a recovery and then the fight. Like, but like watching nobody her just back. goes like, yeah, it's fine. It's cool. It's like, we're all going to process this for a long time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think my, my show is one of the many ways that people can, you know, find their way through it. I was thinking about it with all this Kavanaugh shit happening, which is just, which honestly, like there have been three kind of points that I've hit. There was, you know, her losing the 2016 election then all of the kind of like the beginning, the very early part of um, Me Too happening. Um, and then and then everything happening with Kavanaugh that I that I think have been like incredibly traumatic and that I've had like a. A very hard time, like working myself through. So I'm thinking about like all of those like m those milestones, right? Those like places that I that I work through and then the next one hits and you work yeah. through it and the next one hits. And I then was remembering I was in Austin with my friend from grad school. We were sitting at a park with taking her dog there, dogs running around being crazy. And we get an alert that Scalia died. And I remember that feeling of like, oh, oh we're going to be OK. We're going to be OK, you know. And now here right. we are. You know, you think about that feeling. And now here we are with like perhaps the second dude credibly accused of sexual assault on the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. And like how much this wouldn't have happened. Fucking Hillary had won the goddamn election. Because when she lost, essentially we we started moving towards losing our health, our 
access to reproductive health care. The, the, the white men owning property yeah. and owning people and that yeah. world is it's like it's hanging on by a thread, but it is like grabbing so hard to that thread. Yeah. And I thought, well, this will be the last breath and Hillary will get elected. But no, they, mm. they died. Mm. They came back. They're fucking zombies now. <laughs> and they're like, they're like, they're still at it. And and I feel like the the tide is going in the right direction, but it is like amazing how badly people don't want to give up power. Yeah. 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 It really and they is. will, they will do anything and everything and fight. It's like, but it just seems like we're at, we may get to a point where like the people representing us are not at all like us. And mm -hmm. that is maybe, maybe that's where it has to go to that point. I hope it doesn't. But yeah, I mean, because just it, even just looking, even using Roe versus Wade as an indicator, it's like the majority of Americans want access to abortion care. And yet, right. you know, and the, and the whole thing is these people work for us, yeah. but they're not. No. So like as horrifying as his presidency is, I think it's galvanized this it's amazing so political revolution. The fact that there is a show that I've been doing for the, like there's a show and an album and it's been going on this long. I feel like it's also a direct response to the, all the people that were saying like, why don't you just let it go? I mean, she lost. What's your problem? There was all that like <laughs> kind of telling, telling us like we're sore losers. And, and I'm like, People are never going to forget this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This yeah. story Historic is moment. like a big story. Yeah. yeah. This is a story like everyone is go is playing out. It's still the story. Yeah. Her losing is the beginning of the story. Exactly. And I don't think that that maybe people who are just, oh, let it go, have like really even understand that. Yeah. All. I mean, yeah. They're the people who say let it go are the same people who, who are still shouting, look at her emails, you know yeah. what I mean? And not letting it go. What would you say to Hillary if she was in this room? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Thank you. And like, may I bring you some coffee or <laughs> help you with but anything? Rob, like, <laughs> what can I do for you? You did. You did a lot. You did yeah. a lot for us. And and. You know, I, a lot of people say like, oh, when can Hillary, is Hillary going to come see your show? And I'm kind of like, I don't know if Hillary should even come see my show. But, Cause like, you know, it's not, it's not for her. It's, it's for us. And I don't, I don't want her to feel like this is like, this is you. I know who you are. I, I mean, I don't, everyone is always like, I know who you are and I know what you're saying and I know what you're thinking. There's so much yeah. like been put on her. And mm -hmm. I feel like I'm not really trying to say this is actually her real mind, but it's like how I would imagine it to be and what I thought was the best way to um, express my own feelings through her. It's less important that she's there and sees my show than than like everyone else sees my show. Yeah. She should yeah. just go and like have like go <sighs> get a, go to a spa and just like right. forever. <laughs> yeah. Like. You know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm glad that she's back and I'm really happy to see her because that actually just like makes me feel better because I was so worried about that. But, you know, it's like, let's let's just leave her alone. Yeah. yeah. Let's let her just not wear makeup and live her life. And, and you know, do you enough hair how she fucking wants. Yeah. People are always on about her hair. Why? Like, leave her alone. Stop Why? commenting on her hair. Her hair looks great. I mean, it's like not relevant yeah. yeah, at all. Yeah. And fucking not to Bernie again, but like, and this- Look at his is, hair. Look at his hair. No one <laughs> commented on his hair and he looked like he just got out of bed. He, I have some advice for people. I've, I've been having a teammate, my friend Ben, we've been team vote together for the past like five years. So fun. We always go vote together. And in fact, we used to live in the same, at, in the same district and we would go to the same voting station. But now I moved to Red Hook and he still lives in our old neighborhood. So now he comes down to Red Hook. We go vote. We have Irish coffees. We go up to his district. That's amazing. We vote again. That's great. And it's awesome. So yeah. voting buddies. It's a vote day. It's like, what's up? It's like swimming buddies. It's a important. A friend of mine invented something called Motivote. And Motivote. It's, it's a program that puts you on a team and then you guys get all these emails and it's going to become an app. And what? It force you to yeah. be accountable to other people. So you show up and vote. I love that. I love that. It's a great idea. I love that. It's like having a buddy. I love, I think, I think the It's like a running system. buddy, you know? Yeah, or like, in, you know, when you were little and like you'd go in the pool and everyone would have a buddy, you'd have right. a, and then they'd do like, oh, it's a, find your buddy. buddy they'd check. do a yeah. thing. Yeah, buddy mm -hmm. check and you'd find your buddy and then you'd be like, I got my buddy and you'd like hold your hands up and everyone was so happy and safe. <laughs> <laughs> 
I just wanted to keep watching that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we need. Tell well, us the dates for your show sure. so we can get people to go. So the show is part of the Fringe NYC, the New York International Fringe Festival. And the Fringe Festival runs October 12th through 31st. But my shows are happening on the 13th, 14th, 17th, 20th, and 21st. And you can find out uh, everything you want to know about the show. Watch some videos of past shows and... Um, read more and buy tickets to the, um, to the performances at witness Hillary project.com. Hillary has two L's. Not everybody knows that because sometimes people spell it with one, but Hillary Clinton is two. So it's witness Hillary with two L's project.com. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, yep. My, I'm well, so my name is Rebecca Pronsky, R E B E C C A P R O N S K Y. And since I've been performing under my own name for so long, my social media is still under my name. So I'm Twitter slash Rebecca on Facebook, Instagram. Um, but I'm really just right now, it's mostly stuff about this show and occasionally a picture of a bodega cat. So, you know, I bonus, everybody wins. That was my favorite picture. <laughs> yeah, I love those. Sure. Also, also the like glad handling in the backyard of high dive is so fucking awesome. Like you meeting people. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I have I to do that, that at the beginning of the show. We've been talking about like all the funny things I could say when I walk in. Yeah. Did you vote for me? You didn't? You piece of shit. (laughs) (laughs) But I persist whatever that is and I resist because I am a witness. Do your thing. All right, so we're going to talk about the midterms because they matter. <laughs> the presidential election, I mean, as much as the results of this last one are making our lives fucking miserable, the presidential election is actually kind of less important in our day to day than, you know, getting the Senate and the House and our local elections. Because if we think about Obama, he was unable to get anything done in the last six years because the Republicans controlled Congress. Mm-hmm. And so, it matters. Yeah. These people really matter. So get more people in the seats. Yeah. We need them seats. You can't um, sit with us. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we are recording in New York. So just for all of our fellow New Yorkers, if you have not registered yet, the final day to register for the upcoming election is this Friday, October 12th. So if you're not registered to vote, get to it. Uh, in New York, you can register to vote online. You can do it by mail or in person at your county's board of elections office or at a local DMV center. So get it. Do it. Yeah. Do it. Um, and now I'm going to read you off a little list of all of the male Judiciary <laughs> Committee members on the Republican side and when they're up for re-election or the termination of their job. I also want to know when Susan Collins is up. Fucking Susan Collins. All right. Here's the list. So Chuck Grassley of Iowa is up in 2022. Get him out. Get him out. Lindsey Graham of South Carolina, 2020. Shut it down. John Cornyn of Texas, 2020. Unseat him. Mike Lee of Utah, 2022. Get rid of him. Ted Cruz of Texas is up this year. Definitely get this guy out. Fuck him. Ben Sass of Nebraska, 2020. Fuck that guy. Mike Crapo of Idaho. I mean, I don't even have to say anything. His last name is Crapo. That, I, I almost feel bad for him in middle school. Like that must have been rough. I'm not sure. I if don't that's feel actually, bad. Yeah, I don't I even don't know if bad. that's actually how I'm supposed to pronounce it, but that's how I'm pronouncing it. It's Mike it. Crapo. It's Mike Crapo. Uh, Tom Tillis of North Carolina, 2020. No. <laughs> Just no. <laughs> uh, John Kennedy of Louisiana is up in 2022. Fuck him. And uh, as we know, Orrin Hatch of Utah and Jeff Flake of Arizona are both retiring at the end of their terms. Oh, that's awesome. And there I, is a light. Yeah, <laughs> right. But I have a special just distaste for Jeff Flake. Like, fuck that dude. Yeah. You know, he made this whole thing about like, I can't possibly work under this president. Blah, 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 blah. I have to retire because like I'm not going to get reelected and Trump is garbage all that kind of shit. And then he's voted with Trump basically all the time and yep. hasn't actually used, he's, he's just like, he has no spine. He, he also, no spine. what he did at the Kavanaugh hearing was basically just to save face. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, he got cornered in an elevator by two women who yep. made him listen to them because he couldn't him. get anywhere. So he did it so that he wouldn't look like a complete monster. But in the end, he looks like a complete monster. So yeah. bye Jeff Flake. Bye. 
Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. I hope it hits him. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> um, yeah. So we're going to talk about uh, Ted Cruz right quick, since that one is coming up really, really soon. Um, so to our friends in Texas, you have a real chance to send the GOP a message by putting Beto O'Rourke in office. The last time there was a Democratic senator in Texas who was elected in Texas was Lloyd Benson, who resigned in 1993 to become the U.S. Secretary of the Treasury. A Democrat was appointed to continue Benson's term, but then he was voted out by the Republican Kay Bailey Hutchison, who had that seat for like 20 years. She was then followed by Ted Cruz. We want that seat back, guys. Can't sit with us! You cannot sit with us, Ted Cruz. Can't sit with us! Um, so a little bit about uh, Beto O'Rourke. O'Rourke has a 100% rating from both Planned Parenthood and NARAL. He believes in marriage equality, supports universal background checks on all gun purchases. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't understand. It's crazy. <laughs> Sounds so logical to me. Right? <laughs> and uh, has often spoken out about racial inequality. Again, cool. <laughs> yeah. You friends haven't um, read much about Beto O'Rourke. He's pretty... He's pretty rad, despite the DSA being a bunch of assholes about him sometimes. He was recently quoted as saying that there is nothing more American than to peacefully stand up or take a knee for your rights anytime, anywhere or any place. Yeah. 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 That's that is America. Mm -hmm. Relatedly, he believes in putting an end to the cash bail system, which is responsible for the jailing of low income people of color who can't afford to pay to get out of jail. Yes, please. Yeah, it's really messed up. Let's get you in there, boy. Yeah, he's he's gone viral for a couple of his recent speeches. He's. He actually seems to care about, Mm -hmm. you know, people of color and low income people. I really feel as though if O'Rourke gets elected and he's he's trailing Cruz, uh, not by that much. I want to say like four percentage points right now. Okay. Um, so there's a chance. And I just think it'll send a really strong message to the Republicans that we ain't fucking around no more. I want that so bad. God, God, I really want election today just to. We deserve one. <laughs> right? It'll be like it'll be like when what's his nut of that fucking pedophile? Roy Moore? Ray Roy Moore. Moore. Roy, Roy Moore. Moore. I already forgot his name because yeah. he is that's how it should be. Those right. are the people that we should forget. Yeah. I don't know if I was telling you, but how people are saying that there's incentive for these survivors to come out and tell these stories. And I'm like, what incentive do they have? Mm-hmm. Name one of the Bill Cosby victims. Name one of the Larry Nass. Well, we we could. We um, could, but a lot of people can't. A lot can't. of people can't. I don't even know if a lot of people that I would talk to would know who Larry Nassar was. Yeah, probably which a lot is of people crazy don't. and he's a huge sex offender, but like there's no incentive she will come and pass. She may not now in this climate, but right. for the most part these victims come and pass and they don't get money out of it. If anything, mm-hmm. she put money into this. Yeah. to for her civic duty. Yeah. There's and, no win here. Yeah, and somebody who lied under oath yeah. is going to be one of the highest judges in our yeah. court. So I mean, it just it just goes to show you like I mean, I want to bring back, bring it back to voting. It is connects perfectly. Yeah. It's, she did her civic duty and her civic duty mm-hmm. for her was sitting in front of mm-hmm. all of these uh, senators talking about the worst fucking day of her life. Mm-hmm. If she can do that for us, if she can do that for you, you can get off your fucking ass mm-hmm. and vote yep. in this election. We have to vote. We have to show her like if you're not doing it for anybody else, do it for Dr. Ford and Deborah Ramirez so- Say like and Anita Hill and Anita Hill. Yeah. Be like, you know what, what they, what those senators did to her, I can't stand by and allow that to happen. Mm-hmm. I need to do what I can do. And, and for some of us that's marching, demonstrating, writing, calling for some of us, that's voting. So like vote, vote. get in the habit of voting. Speaking of voting, subliminal messages, vote, 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 vote. vote, vote, vote. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of, uh, of voting, I also we also really want to talk about Joe Manchin because he want is a big word. But yeah. Have to have to have to talk about him um, because he is a Democrat. I uh, personally have rated him in the in the senator yearbook. I have raised him as the most useless Democrat. <laughs> um, however, that being said, that being said, what state is he from? West Virginia. <laughs> and how Republican is that state? Very much. Very so. Republican. But so he's a Democrat. Uh, so he's a conservative, he's a Democrat in a very conservative state. He describes himself as fiscally responsible and socially compassionate. Mm. Um, CBS news has called him a rifle brandishing moderate. Who's about <laughs> as centrist as a Senator can get. That being said, uh, Nate Silver's five thirty eight, which is an awesome website that you all should check out has reported that he's voted with Trump nearly 61% of the time. 
Uh, exactly. He was uh, challenged in the Democratic primary by Paula Jean Swearengin. Swearengin. I don't know. We might that be works. saying that wrong, but it'll be in the notes. You can see how it's spelled. You can yeah. Try for yourself. She is an activist and a coal miner's daughter. Yeah. She was defeated in the primary, but. But there are people like her in West Virginia. Uh, On the Republican side, he is being challenged by the West Virginia Attorney General Patrick Morrissey. Morrissey is garbage. Garbage. He has an A plus rating from the NRA. (laughs) You get. Yeah. I did not know you got ratings for being in the NRA. I guess that makes sense. For voting voting against any sort of gun restrictions, you get get an A plus rating from the NRA. Do you also get a star? (laughs) You get a star on the top of your. Well done. (laughs) Good job, Pat. He tried to blame Democrats for Trump's forced family separation policy. Okay. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Okay. Mm -hmm. Sure. (laughs) And he is against abortion. I I mean, that's, I feel like that's redundant. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Like super against abortion. Like he supported North Carolina's 20 week abortion ban. Mm -hmm. Just just like a full on ban after 20 weeks of pregnancy. I mean, that's, you know, it's like, I keep wanting to say to people, most most women who seek an abortion after 20 weeks, there's a medical reason that they're doing that. Yes. You know, not all of them. And I believe That's that the- all women should have the choice at all times. But for the most part, like, there's probably a reason. And that's the thing. I, I mean, most of the time it's because something wrong has gone wrong. And mm-hmm. either the mother is in danger or the child has something wrong with it in terms yeah. of like, I, there was one in Ohio. And it was after the 20 weeks where the baby was, was in the uterus and all of its organs were growing on the outside. And so had she, had she taken that baby to term from what I remember, I believe she would have been, she would have been at risk for dying, but definitely that the baby would come out and not be alive. And, and they called it a voluntary abortion. So she had to sign paperwork and it wouldn't be covered under insurance, even though it was a, it was a medical issue. Yeah, It was detrimental to her and the baby was not going to live. And how dare you force a woman to carry a baby to term who is going to be stillborn most likely and force a woman to go through that trauma. I mean, that's just unconscionable to me. It's, it's the idea of, of trusting women and valuing women. And if, and if we're looking at a guy like Pat Morrissey, we're in a country right now, like what this whole Supreme court process said to me was that women are less human than men. And that's what all these senators that voted to put Kavanaugh in believe that, mm-hmm. that we are worth less. Mm-hmm. Um, and someone like Pat Morrissey, who wouldn't allow a woman to get access to abortion ever. I mean, he doesn't ever want people to have access. He's saying you don't have the right to choose. You don't have ownership over your own body. You are worth less than us. You are mm-hmm. less human. Let me decide for you because I know better. Mm-hmm. Fuck that guy. Um, so, That being said, Joe Manchin's not great, but he's better than Marcy. Mm -hmm. Um, And and we do say that he's allegedly a Democrat, but we are better off with him in West Virginia. Lesser of two evils. Exactly. Um, And that, you know, that really sucks. I hate this idea of strategic voting, um, but these are some of the nuances of politics. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have to choose the better of two options, even though both options really kind of suck. Yeah. But the thing about it is sometimes we just need to look at baby steps. Sometimes we need to say like, Joe Manchin is a, he was a very popular governor. Um, The people of West Virginia like him. He's, I think this race is pretty close and it's very possible that this vote on Kavanaugh for him was a long game where he was basically like, yeah, I'm going to vote for Kavanaugh so I can stay in office. Yeah. It's really just kind of like better to have him than to have Morrissey because at least 49% of the time or 39% 39% of the time he doesn't vote with Trump. And I, I have a feeling, correct me if I'm wrong, but I have a feeling Morrissey would be all Trump all the time. Uh-huh. So uh, Jesse, you got anything to say about our lovely no. friend, Susan Collins no. up in Maine? Ugh. What you got girl? Just why? Why? I, mean, I feel like Maine is white and old. Well, guess what? What? Collins up for reelection in 2020. Fuck yeah. Put that shit down. And you also can't sit with us. Yeah. No, you can sit with Ted Cruz. How could you vote for Kavanaugh? Yeah, no, it's really bad. I expect so little out of white cisgender old men who sit on the Republican side who could literally care less about what a woman says to them or about their body or rights. But Susan Collins was particularly disappointing. She was 
she was instrumental in mm-hmm. in this whole vote. I mean, I think that what Rebecca Traster said in her recent book is very uh, um useful here. So she said, quote, white women who enjoy proximal power from their association with white men Mm -hmm. have often served as the white patriarchy's most eager foot soldiers, end quote. And so, you know, the thing that we have to keep coming to terms with and keep realizing is that white dudes aren't doing it alone. No. 52, I got my statistic wrong. It's 52%. I I don't know, 52, 53% of white women voted for Trump, right? Mm Mm-hmm. These women are, he couldn't have gotten elected without them. This becomes an issue, not only of gender, but an issue of, of racism mm-hmm. and of class. Mm-hmm. And it's about white women protecting their own privilege and by attaching themselves to white men. This is the, this is the kind of thing that we're talking about. This is what's important. So we know we were talking earlier about, about Collins and, um, and how she's up in 2020 and how, you know, we need, we need people in Maine to vote and we're really hoping that they vote her out. Mm-hmm. Let's move up there real quick. Yeah, right. Who wants to go to Maine? <laughs> Who will rent a van? Uh, but uh, but because of her vote for Kavanaugh, people are really watching this stuff and we, people are not going to let her forget. So there was mm-hmm. a crowdfunding campaign that was set up on CrowdPack that was raising money to to find to finance whoever opposes her because I don't think anyone's thrown their, thrown their hat in the ring yet mm-hmm. but it has raised over 3.5 million dollars for the next democratic candidate to run. That's amazing. But my question is is like listen, I want Susan Collins out as well, but like why just her? That, right. I think that was what I was conflicted by is that yeah. we expected so much from this one woman on the Republican side. And I, I get it. And I'm yeah. also pissed off, but there is a moment for me where I'm like, cool, we're going this hard and railing this person, but why not all the other white shitty dudes who did the same yeah. fucking thing? I mean, I guess my feeling on that is like, you know, I remember when I was watching it and they had the the four people to watch, right? These people might go one way or the other. So you had Murkowski in a lot from Alaska, you had Collins, you had Flake, and you had Mansion. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think for the reasons that we've talked about already, Mansion wasn't going to vote yes because and lesser of two evils. Lesser, and that's a lesser of two evils thing. Jeff Flake's already retiring, so like, I wish we were hearing more about him because that was a fucking really weak move because he has nothing to lose. Mm-hmm. He could have voted with his conscience, and obviously he doesn't have one. There was no, there was no question in anyone's mind that Orrin Hatch wasn't gonna, you know, mm-hmm. was was gonna be like, no, I don't think so. Never mind, you know? And like, and honestly, like I want people to be more fucking pissed off at Lindsey Graham, who was a never Trumper. And now he's one of Trump's biggest foot soldiers, you know? Because that's the thing, they'll do anything to survive. Wait, we didn't do the fun fact though. Oh yeah. So fun fact. Fun fact. During Collins' 45 minute speech (laughs) in which she tried to explain her decision to be a foot soldier for the white patriarchy, the campaign received such an, the the crowd pack campaign received such an influx of donors that it temporarily crashed. So you guys are people, damn it. It's fine. (laughs) Fucking it up. Um, Anger is useful. So get involved, donate, be mad, use that rage. Just put it into good use. Yeah. By voting. (laughs) Yeah. Have we said vote yet? Yeah, seriously. So everybody remember, I mean, we've got Kirsten Gillibrand. She's up by 32 points. So we're not, she's up this year. We're not super worried about losing her. Still go vote for her. But there's Mm -hmm. other really important elections in New York, one of which is in Buffalo. Chris Collins, because he was arrested for insider trading and he was the first member of the House to endorse Trump for president. Here in New York State. Get your shit together, Buffalo. Come on, Buffalo. We need ya. And then we are wondering... If we have any listeners from North Dakota. I hope so. Yeah, because if we do, hi, North Dakota. Vote for Heidi Heitkamp. She is in trouble. 538 is giving her a three in 10 chance of defeating her Republican challenger, Kevin Kramer. That is super, super not great. The odds of us flipping the house are not fantastic, but that doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. There's a 22% chance uh, as of today as per 538. Um, But in this election, there are 35 seats that are up for election. We have 23 Democratic seats that are not up and 42 Republican seats that are not up. So we need to put a lot more Democrats in office. We're looking for a blue wave here, friends. Um, and then we got some shout outs. A quick shout out to Maisie Hirano, who is a fucking badass. Badass. She's the first Asian American woman to be elected to the Senate. And she made a point of asking every single male nominee whether he has sexually assaulted anyone or signed an NDA 
NDA in order to catch them lying under oath, which is so fucking cool. It's so awesome. What a like badass 007 move. Yeah, she's incredible. <laughs> um, and we also want to shout out to Alaskan Senator Lisa Murkowski, who had the goddamn ovaries to be the only GOP member to vote against Kavanaugh. Yep. Um, she really, that woman really, really cares about her constituents. She always votes on behalf of Alaskan citizens. She mm -hmm. really fucking cares. She took the time to listen to Alaskan citizens who told their stories about sexual assault. She takes her job really, really seriously. Um, Trump now is saying that she'll never recover after her no vote, but Trump yeah, can kindly take a long walk off a short pier. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, bye. Yeah, bye. Yeah, so- Your time's up soon too, buddy. Anyway, so the message of our podcast today is please vote. Vote. We see what all these old white dinosaurs are doing to our country. So vote. So get out and vote. 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 Because- Vote. Don't ever forget, Supreme Court justices can be impeached. Thank you for listening to Welcome to My Vagina. It's time for us to slide on out of here. God damn it. It doesn't it. sound right when I do it. I know. <laughs> Places you can find us <laughs> on Instagram at Welcome to My Vagina. We're trying to get a thousand followers to tell your friends. And uh, Twitter at Welcome to My Vag. We also have a website, welcomebyvagina.com, which leads you to my YouTube page, also yep. Welcome by Vagina. Uh huh. And there's a blog section where I have posted a couple of things, but we're also looking for writers. So if you have interesting opinions, if you are a person who wants to break into writing and wants to share your voice, we're looking for diverse opinions, all sorts of different people. We're basically looking know. for anyone who's not a cisgender man. We, yeah. We definitely want you guys to be allies, but right now we're looking yeah. for other voices. Yeah. And also we love uh, our white women peers, but we're two white women sitting here, so we'd love more diverse voices. Also, thank you so much to our producer, uh, Caitlin Moldenhauer of More Banana Productions. Please check out all of the work from this all-women network, including World Stealers, There Will Be Porn, I'm Listening with Anita Flores, and Awkward Sex in the City with Natalie Wall, which is coming to you in July. Yeah, More Banana Production is killing it. Yeah, guys, we're kind of taking over the world. And don't forget to review us. And subscribe and tell your friends. Yeah. And we're going to have merch soon. Merch. I don't know why that word always makes me think of Merkins. Ooh. <laughs> Merkin merch. Also check out all of Rebecca's writing at franklyrebecca.com. Dun, da, da. Dun, da, da. Yeah. All right. And See you us. next Tuesday. <laughs> See you next Tuesday. <laughs>